various aspects of regulation starting with uh, what are the different types of regulations that are available to who all could become the regulators and then uh, what are uh, the various uh, theories and uh, interdependencies that are present with respect to regulations and uh, even talking about uh, what are the various tools in terms of uh, regulations and finally uh, looking at the cost versus the benefit uh, analysis of getting into the regulations for various uh, industries as well as companies. Right, so this is uh, purely uh, an economical uh, aspect of uh, regulation that we are going to uh, look at in this particular session. So whenever we are using the word regulation, we generally classify that into three major aspects. The regulations could be in the form of statutes, which are generally a uh, kind of uh, acts and all prepared by the legislative body of the country they are one type of regulation they are in the form of statutes they have to be uh, adhered by various entities then we have administrative kind of regulations which are kind of rules set by either government agencies or some independent uh, bodies which are authorized by the government these are kind of uh, administrative regulations and finally uh, we have a judicial law kind of regulation where we see the court findings coming up. So regulations uh, could be in either of these uh, three forms and on the same lines when we talk about regulators there could be government agencies but to a large extent we can even have independent uh, regulators which are non-government agencies but the government agencies it recognizes and gives power to these uh, uh, independent uh, regulators but the only thing is they are not funded by the government so they are politically dependent because they are not uh, funded by the government they there is a possibility that they are they, they, they are more and more biased politically or they have pressures politically but when it comes to the independent regulators we see two major groups one could be self-regulatory organizations whereas the others could be non-self-regulatory when I am talking about a self-regulatory uh, organization they play a dual role they play the role of regulator and also they represent their members. So in this case the problem that comes out is a conflict of interest. Especially in case of self-regulatory kind of organization which acts as a regulator as well as uh, has its own uh, business uh, in the same space. Those there is a possibility that whatever the decisions or whatever the regulations they are bringing up, they might be in their own personal benefit. So some kind of conflict of interest uh, can come into picture. So if it is a self-regulatory organization, first of all, it need not be an independent regulator. When I say independent regulator, there is a government uh, recognition associated with it. So, a self-regulatory body does not need to be an uh, independent regulator as well as an independent regulator need not be a self-regulatory self organization. So, we just need to be uh, careful on that dimension. And uh, as I said, if it is a self-regulatory organization which acts as a uh, uh, which acts as a regulator also need not be an independent regulator but it can be a regulator then there could be a possibility of inherent conflict of interest. So that should be uh, taken care of by the self-regulatory uh, organization. And as a part of the regulatory mechanism, we can even have some outside bodies like uh, uh, the FASB or uh, the ICAI in India, Indian uh, 
चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स इंस्टीट्यूट इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स ऑफ इंडिया और पर फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स बोर्ड इंटरनेशनल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स बोर्ड ऑल दीज दे आर नॉट रेगुलेटर बट दे हेल्प द रेगुलेटर्स इन डिजाइनिंग द पॉलिसीज इन डिजाइनिंग द प्रोडक्ट्स so that the regulators can use them and uh, pass the regulations and contribute to the regulations more and more effectively right so the typical uh, regulatory uh, structure may contain some government agencies or independent regulators or outside bodies so if there are outside bodies they just help the regulators in taking the decision by designing some policies so they may get into policy making aspect but they don't uh, regulate the scenarios whereas when it comes to the government uh, agencies yes they they pass the regulations the same thing can happen with the independent regulatory bodies also but they some of them may be sros where self regulatory organizations which have their own uh, members also with them so there the conflict of interest need to be addressed